Okay, a little bit of vlogging test with the G9. Uh, I can already anticipate that it is going to be good. Because uh, in my opinion, the GH5 and GX85, they already have pretty good autofocus face tracking. And the, the autofocus stays on my face pretty much the whole time, the, all, all the time. They, they're pretty accurate. And sometimes maybe a little bit slow, uh, but in general it's very, very usable. And the G9 is faster than those, so I do not expect anything less than great autofocus here. So this is just a mini test. Now so I'm gonna try to shoot some uh, high-res mode, uh, high-res mode photos, handheld, because we got sunny day today finally, so we can test out. Uh, whether or not we can get uh, usable handheld shots. All right, I'm gonna do some of those, you know, uh, switching the scene and I see if the autofocus can keep up with my face. I'm gonna move out of the out of the frame and uh, let's see how fast it takes, how long it takes for the camera to focus on the background and I move back into the frame, lock into my face immediately or does it hesitate? That's the question. So with the GH5 and GX85, it works pretty well. Uh, with it, I was surprised that G, even GX85 can find my face fairly fast. So I wonder how, just how fast it, I can't really see really well on the monitor. So I, I'm gonna have to review this later. But I think it's working pretty well. It looks like it's working pretty well. There's a more autofocus testing. This time I'm just shooting random objects with a long focal length. So we're at uh, 60 millimeters all the way. Zoom in to 60mm, let's see if we can find the object in the frame. Looking good. Right now I'm in face tracking mode, so it's probably not optimal for tracking to, to find uh, the op these objects that are not, not faces. If I use one spot uh, autofocus, let me just turn it into one area autofocus, it might just do better. Even. All right, right now we're in one area autofocus, okay, it has it. it didn't react that fast uh, there you go but it is tracking pretty well it is finding the target pretty well there you go that's and move to there let's mount a little bit maybe get closer yes because these leaves can be a little bit confusing A solid subject. I think it's gonna do better for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna use this tennis ball as an example right now. We're still at one area of focus, and we're gonna move away to the background and back to the tennis ball. Hesitated a little bit, move to the background and foreground. Background, foreground. Background, foreground. As you can see, the typical contrast detection out of focus. There's a little bit uh, hunting back and forth when it's uh, at the uh, at the focus uh, points. Like it, it does have to hunt back and forth a little bit to confirm that everything is indeed in focus. So that is something unavoidable for Micro Four Thirds, for, for, non, for Micro Four Thirds, for Panasonic cameras so far because they're all contrast-based detection, uh, based autofocus. So yeah, the autofocus is pretty fast. So the only thing is the, uh, you know, the, the, the pulsing in the background, the hunting and pulsing. But I think uh, they are trying to keep it at a minimum. I think it's not that bad. I'm totally fine with this autofocus, this is pretty fast. Alright, maybe there's some setting I can adjust to make them go even faster and whatnot. Alright, so far, so good. Okay, that's good. Okay, another thing that I noticed before is the contrast-based autofocus suffers a little bit in low light, so I'm gonna test it in low light as well. Like, uh, with the GH5, it's gonna, probably gonna have a little hard time to find my face. In this situation, it's a really dark way inside, um, kind of a tent for tennis. 
indoor tennis situations here. So it's a little bit dark, um, but it's tracking my face, I think. Let's try to go to the background. It's funny in the background. Back to my face. It's funny in my face. Good. Not too bad. It's, uh, it's actually brighter than zero, so I guess it's not too bad. Okay, so this is the second time this year uh, playing tennis. Actually, I took like two weeks of break during the Christmas and New Year season, holiday season. Um, so yeah, uh, yesterday I played and my body is still hurting, like my body is still adjusting to sports activities. I've been sitting at home for two weeks and my body is getting a little bit lazy. Uh, so yeah, um, today I'm gonna just relax a little bit, not try to play too hard, and we're gonna just try to play in a re very relaxing way, and uh, not to hurt my body further, just to recover slowly. Uh, that's the goal, and have fun, entertain, entertain myself, entertain the players. And also another thing about the G9 that is really good is that you get a when you're recording a video, you can see the frame. There's a red frame indicating that you are recording, which is awesome. GH5 doesn't have it. You have to upgrade to GH5 Mark II to get it, I think. There are a lot of functions that are great on the G9 that GH5 doesn't doesn't get it. They don't give it, they don't give it to G, GH5 for, for some reason, I don't understand. Um, for example, the uh, manual focus, uh, focus control. You can adjust the manual focus control to make it a linear, menu focus and you can adjust the focus through how much degree you want um, so that is really good you can turn it basically turn my uh, like a 12 to 16 millimeter lens into a linear manual focus lens it's really good and you can repeat uh, very accurately what, what uh, whatever you are trying to uh, focus on so it's really really good function especially for video is gonna be super handy because back in the days when you don't have that function uh, what happens is that when you turn the focus ring faster, it will travel faster. So it's very, very inaccurate if you want to focus on the same objects. Uh, or if you want to go back and forth between foreground and background. Alright, so I'm back home after tennis and uh, just want to finish up the vlog and uh, just talk about the camera, why I got a G9 uh, at this point. So just like many fellow uh, Panasonic users uh, we've been waiting I've been waiting for it, uh, expecting anticipating the the legendary unicorn camera G GH6 to be released but uh, still we don't have anything uh, solid just yet we know roughly the you know it's gonna shoot 6k videos gonna shoot uh, 4k 120p all those good stuff uh, we don't know for sure yet if we will have face detect autofocus and that is the main selling point for a lot of people. You know, it would be a perfect camera, but it would be a massive overkill for what I do. You know, casual video vlogging, uh, shooting travel vlog and stuff. I don't really need that. I don't even use the, the 4K 60p in GH5 that much. So even GH5 is a little bit overkill for me. Uh, so I don't think I, 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 I should get a GH6. And I really wanted a photo camera photography to get back into photography. I really wanted to shoot more photos. So I was thinking about A7R 3 because I saw some um, some used ones on secondhand market at really good price. Like uh, there's a really low one at uh, 1200 euros and uh, usually it's around 1500 euros. And even 1500 euros is really cheap. A7R3, so I really wanted to get that one, but uh, someone else managed to get uh, to buy that camera, buy those all those cameras before I did, uh, because it was during uh, New Year's Eve and Christmas season, so uh, the shops were not open yet. So as soon as the shop opened, people just bought them all, uh, and they sell so fast because obviously they are great cameras and such a uh, low price. Definitely, uh, it's a great deal. So yeah, I didn't get an A7R3, so I um, turned back to G9 <laughs> I took another look at the G9 because I was already pretty familiar with the G9, but I never, you know, I really committed to the idea of uh, buying a G9 
as a second uh, uh, like as a photography camera but now I took a really good look and I realized actually it has probably even more you know uh, benefits and uh, advantages over the a7r3 at a much much lower price almost half the price right now g9 goes as low as 800 euros here in Europe so it has great ergonomics has a best ibis has a great video feature much much better video feature 4k 60p all the good stuff and also i have a pretty complete micro four third lens collection so i if i choose to buy a7r3 i would have to reinvest into e-mount full frame lenses that would be super expensive that would double the price of what i wanted to invest in the first place so uh, with a G9, pretty much with a body and don't need anything else. I have plenty of lens to use. So yeah, that's uh, that's why I got this this camera, G9. And it has high res mode, which I've talked about already and I tested in low light situation as well. It's really, really awesome. It works fantastically. The image quality is great. It clean up the image so well. It gives you so much more detail and sharpness and uh, clarity and everything. And also the uh color science of lumix is really good as well i really like the images straight out of the camera without editing it just looks fantastic all right i've been shooting in 4k 10 bit uh, 24p i think 24 25 so i just wanted to test the auto focusing up previously all the previous clips were shot in 4k 60p so uh i heard that uh, the autofocus works better in 60p that's why I wanted to test the 24p as well to see the difference, if there is any difference. All right, let's uh, switch switch to the background and to me. From this side, it's easier. Background and to me. It's always in face tracking mode, so. Yeah, it's tracking pretty well. Doing a great job. Okay. So that's that, that's the update of why I got a G9. And uh, it's been fantastic, I love this camera. When you have the camera in your hand, it actually feels much, much more premium than what it looks like on the specs, uh, spec sheet. So it's actually a better camera than what you, you would think. So yeah, this camera, this G9 actually does what uh, probably 80% what GH5 can do and more and uh, it offers a lot of unique features so it just uh, it's great for photo and it's great for video. So yeah, I almost can replace my GH5. Now I think if I go on a trip, I'm probably gonna just bring G9 instead of bring both, maybe. Uh, we'll see about that. But uh, yeah, that, that says uh, how good uh, this camera is. All right.